the Fulton Surface to Air Recovery System, or STARS, often called the Skyhook. It's a clever system for retrieving men or equipment on the ground by aircraft. It's been brought to the public's attention by several pop culture appearances. It's used in John Wayne's Vietnam film The Green Berets, the James Bond movie Thunderball, and most recently in Christian Bale's Batman, The Dark Knight. Of course, its more comical and sensational use comes from modified versions for the video game universe. The Fulton Surface to Air Recovery System was used by the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, the United States Air Force, and the United States Navy. It could be set up to be used on multiple aircraft, and this includes the B-17 Flying Fortress, P-2 Neptune, Fairchild C-123 Provider, and commonly the Hercules family of aircraft. And I, I got the name on because I have a The system may seem like a far-fetched idea, destined to never get past the drawing board, but it did work, and despite appearing high risk, it was relatively safe. The Skyhook comes in a package usually dropped by an airplane, and this could include a life raft. The package contained an overall type harness that was attached to a high-strength nylon line. A small helium bottle would inflate a balloon tethered to the nylon line and suit. The balloon would float up into the sky 500 feet or 150 meters. An aircraft would fly into the line with two tubular steel horns, 30 feet, 9 meters long, and spread at a 70 degree angle from its nose. Deflector cables were strung between the nose and the wingtips to prevent the line from becoming tangled in the propellers in the event the plane missed the balloon with the horns. The area of line the plane was to intercept was marked by a bright mylar marker placed at the 425 foot, 130 meter level, which the aircraft targeted. For night recoveries, battery-powered lights were used to mark the line. Once the line was caught, the balloon would be released and float away into the air. The line was secured by a spring-loaded trigger mechanism called the Sky Anchor. The line would travel along the aircraft before being retrieved by the recovery crew using a catch pole, after which it would be connected to an onboard winch. Entrance into the aircraft depended on the plane used. This could be through the main cargo doors, or through a hatch on the belly of the aircraft. Although aircraft are traveling at speed during the pickup, the cargo or person is pulled up more gentle than you might imagine. The cargo or agent does not reach the speed of the aircraft until the line is pulled more horizontally. This means the initial pull off the ground is not likely to injure anyone or damage cargo. One of the best features of the system is that since the initial energy of the pickup drives the target straight up, it could be used in different rescue settings, such as in forests. This type of technology has actually been around for a long time. In the 1930s, aircraft would pick up mailbags using a hook. This was handy in locations where landing an aircraft was difficult. This recovery system would catch the attention of the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II. The Americans started to look closely at gliders starting in 1941, in response to Germany's successful use of gliders since the very start of World War II. However, American gliders like the Waco CG-4 were not cheap. They cost about $15,000 a piece, too expensive to be used just once. The Army Air Force wanted to be able to efficiently recover these gliders, as well as their crew if necessary. So the mailbag recovery system was modified. In September of 1941, a modified Stinson snagged a 230-kilogram Midwest utility sports glider. The shock to the glider was reduced by reeling out and gently breaking the winch cable during the initial pickup. This reduced the acceleration of the glider. This system was fitted to C-47 aircraft, which would be used to recover gliders during the war. Though in reality, the majority of gliders were treated as single-use aircraft. This technology would also be trialed with humans during World War II. In 1943, it was first trialed with sheep, then men. It worked, but it took some skill from the pilot who had to fly fairly low, and it required space clear of trees and obstructions. 
The low pickups also meant the cargo was brought to the same speed as the aircraft too quickly. The early system compensated by using a crude shock absorbing device, but it placed the man, or sheep, at risk of injury. It was further important not to injure the subject being collected by the device, as they had to physically climb into the aircraft once picked up. The system worked, but it needed improving. An ambitious engineer by the name of Robert Fulton would take on the challenge in the early 1950s. Fulton had an extensive engineering background, which included work during World War II on an aerial gunnery trainer, which used films projected on a screen. He delivered more than 500 to the Navy and Army Air Corps. After the war, Fulton joined the aviation inventor craze in attempts at making aircraft a household commodity. He worked on a flying car project called the Airphibian. It was an interesting project which allowed a car to convert to an aircraft by adding a modular tail wing unit. The controls remained the same both for flying and driving. Though flying cars never became a practical thing, the concept did set Fulton to thinking about rescue in the event of Americans potentially crash landing their family aircraft in remote locations. Fulton began researching the Skyhook system in 1950 and would work with both the CIA and Air Force. The process took some time, particularly the Sky Anchor, which secured the line to the aircraft. Research included test dummies and some live animals, but no bears. Live pigs were used for the project, as pigs have a nervous system close to humans. However, their shape also made them more likely to spin as they flew through the air at 125 miles per hour, 200 kilometers an hour. This spinning can be referred to as pork screwing. In one instance, a pissed off pig arrived on board uninjured, but in a disoriented state. When it recovered, perhaps understandably, it attacked the crew. You know, Smithers, I think I'll donate a million dollars to the local orphanage. When pigs fly, <laughs> the CIA first used a prototype system for human pickup as early as 1952. It was used in Manchuria in November of 52 to recover a courier who was in contact with anti-communist groups. The mission ultimately failed when Chinese forces downed the low-flying rescue aircraft with small arms fire. This highlighted another issue with air pickups from extremely low altitude. The first human pickup using the new Fulton surface-to-air recovery system took place August 12, 1958, when Staff Sergeant Levi Woods of the U.S. Marine Corps was winched aboard a P-2V Neptune. It was a success. The geometry of the long line made for a slow climb to about 100 feet or 30 meters before streamlining behind the aircraft. That being said, it was never completely a comfortable experience. Woods described it as feeling like a kick in the pants. Spinning was an easily solved issue. Extension of the arms and legs prevented such pork screwing while the individual was winched on board, which was a joyride of about six minutes. One of the first operational uses of the Skyhook was in 1960. It was used in Alaska under the direction of the Navy's Arctic Research Laboratory. A Navy P-2V Neptune picked up mail from a floating ice island known as Fletcher's Ice Island. Artifacts and geological samples were safely retrieved, including mastodon tusks from an archaeological party on the tundra. The high point of the trials came when the P-2V dropped a rescue package near the icebreaker USS Burton Island. Retrieved by a ship's boat, the package was brought on deck, the balloon inflated, and the pickup was accomplished. Land swoops down with a skyhook, and it's a real joyride. In 1962, the project had its first successful documented use against an enemy military target. Project Cold Feet dropped two agents by parachute on a Soviet drift station in the Arctic, which had been abandoned. These drift stations were often abandoned largely intact, with the Soviets believing they were inaccessible, and they had the benefit of destroying themselves with the shifting ice. However, Skyhook created a unique opportunity to access these otherwise inaccessible research sites. Two agents departed to be pair-dropped on the drift station on the 28th of May 1962. The site could be just reached by taking off from a northern Canadian airbase. The agents spent 72 hours on the site. 
They recovered Soviet equipment, which included evidence of advanced research on acoustical systems to detect under-ice submarines. The men and equipment were safely extracted by a B-17, despite harsh weather. Three separate extractions took place. The operation confirmed that the Skyhook system worked in difficult conditions. In May of 1966, the system was further upgraded. It was successfully used to pick up two crewmen at Edwards Air Force Base in California. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa, shit. That is that cool. Is a, yeah. Well done, PUBG. The Fulton system stayed in service until 1996, and though it was deployed during the Vietnam War, Given its use in clandestine operations, it's hard to say how many times it was used, if at all in a combat situation. Only one fatal incident was ever recorded while using the system. On the 26th of April 1982, Sergeant First Class Clifford Strickland was picked up by a Lockheed MC-130 while training in Germany. He fell to his death due to a failed bushing at the top of the left yoke pivot bolt. After this, an emergency parachute was integrated into the Skyhook harness. However, the system was already beginning to be phased out. The system was retired in 1996 due to the increased availability of long-range helicopters, including the tilt rotor aircraft V-22 Osprey. Yeah, that's right. My Skyhook saved the day. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this spine stretcher of a video on the Fulton surface to air recovery system. I hope all your recoveries are safe ones and we'll see you next time.